So, earlier we revisited Rwanda and its dreams of becoming an IT hub. And that mantra of being a tech-powered economy is one that nations the world over pay lip service to. In practice, it's often a different story altogether. Typhon King has been to Brazil to see if innovation there matches its government's vision. At first glance, Florianopolis conjures up the quintessential postcard images of Brazil. No surprise, it's become one of South America's most popular destinations, a magnet for sun seekers. But for all its hedonism, Florianopolis has its gaze firmly fixed on something altogether more serious, becoming the regional technological powerhouse. This is Sapiens Park, a $1.3 billion brainchild of the Brazilian government, as part of a wider $24 billion initiative to promote science and technology in the country. So the strategy involves uh, having instruments for supporting new firms, science parks like this one, high-tech uh, incubator, and uh, stimulating students to create their own companies. But for all the talk of the money, it's tangible innovation that the region wants to shout about. And the investment is spawning a variety of solutions to very local problems. Unsurprisingly, one of Florianopolis' innovative pieces of technology helps protect beachgoers from the negative effects of sun exposure. The ozone in Totem currently lies in pole position to become a familiar sight up and down beaches around the world. At a glance, it gives you a readout of UV radiation severity and recommends protective measures to take according to skin type. Another red-hot issue in Brazil, drink driving. Enter another cool Florianopolis counter, the Bathometro, an in-car device that disables the engine unless the driver passes a breathalyzer test, takes a photo of the driver, and alerts authorities if you're over the limit. What makes the new model of Bathometro unique is the capability to transmit images wirelessly. With this, it removes doubt as to whether the person tested was the one driving or not. And that means companies can monitor their drivers from afar, and for police to have test results and photographic evidence immediately transmitted to stations. Some of the tech isn't new, but has changed the old-style politics of Brazil. Designed to combat electoral fraud, the electronic voting machine was launched nationally in 2000. And it was after the debacle of the bush Gore American presidential election that this particular gadget put Florianopolis on the international technology map. The electronic voting machine guarantees the authenticity of the person who's voting by digital printing, making the system more infallible against electoral corruption. It might not look like a, a very advanced piece of technology, maybe something more like from the 1970s, but that's one of its strengths. It's very robust and has a 12-hour battery life. This means during elections it can be transported to isolated communities in regions such as the Amazon. Another Florianopolis company hoping to bridge the technological gap between Brazil and more developed nations is Hoplon, creators of the award-winning online game Tycodon. Now the company has formed a partnership to take the multiplayer action game to 31 countries and develop the concept towards a more social gaming experience. In reaching out to the rest of the world, companies like Hoplon are the exception. One problem, say critics, is Brazilian companies tend to have an insular focus. Observers believe that to really succeed, Brazil needs to look beyond its borders and take the initiative. The companies of Florianopolis, they need to begin think globally. There are a lot of opportunities there and the companies, they don't believe that they can get there. If Florianopolis is to become the Silicon Valley of South America, that lack of self-confidence needs to be addressed, as do other deep-set structural and cultural issues like low productivity, the shortage of tech graduates and a bloated bureaucracy. Typhon King in Brazil. Now it's time to soak up any spare minutes you may have left with another folder of favourites courtesy of Kate Russell and Webscape.